Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Over the last uh, two or three years, I've shown in a number of videos how I design, build, and wire control panels like this one here on my Piedmont Southern Model Railroad. Now, I realize, though, that there are a lot of you out there who really don't want to get involved with such a complex build and wiring operation as comes with this type of control panel. So, what are some of the other options that are available to you? Well, the folks at DCC Concepts recently sent me this uh, control panel, and this is their Cobalt Alpha Central uh, control panel that can offer you plug-and-play operation on your model railroad. So what I want to do now is take you over to the modules that I built a couple of years ago where I've installed IP digital switch machines and I'll show you how to set this up and use it to control turnouts and other accessories on your model railroad. So let's go ahead and get started with that. <laughs> Okay, I'm back over here at the module now, and what I want to do is show you how you can use the Cobalt Alpha Central control panels with an NCE system. And I'm going to use the NCE system as my example because these are directly compatible with them. These can be plugged directly into the panels on the front of your model railroad that come with your NCE system and be used to control accessory decoders of any type uh, directly because they are completely NCE compatible. With other systems you have to use an interface and we'll get into that later when I show you how to use this with another type of DCC system. But that's going to be a few videos down the road before I'm ready to show you that. Now, originally, you probably remember that I used these blue point switch machines to control the turnouts here on the module. And I did a number of videos showing you how to install these blue point switch machines here on the modules, how to wire them up, how to install the push rods, the whole thing. So why did I take these out? Well, for one thing, because I wanted to be able to experiment with other types of products like using JMRI to control a model railroad and also with things like this uh, DCC Concepts Cobalt Alpha Central control panel that uh, allows you plug and play operations with an NCE system because these can be plugged directly into the panels that you install on the fascia of your model railroad for plugging in NCE throttles. And so you can use these directly. They are completely 100% compatible, plug and play, all you have to do. And they, ex they essentially act like a throttle that sends accessory commands out to specific accessory decoders. And we'll take a look at how that works in just a minute. Um, but at any rate, as I said, I pulled all of my Bluepoint uh, manual uh, switch machines from the uh, module and I replaced them with the Cobalt uh, IP Digital switch machines because these have a built-in accessory decoder. So all you have to do is install these and it was very easy because all I had to do was disconnect my blue point switch machines, cut the wires loose, and then install these guys in their place and attach the wires that were already in place, the feeders uh, that I had previously installed for those uh, switch machines. And we're going to take a look at how you can use these DCC Concepts control panels to control your accessory decoders and various other things on your model railroad. So let's go ahead and I'm going to bring you in where you can see what I've got here on the module and how this all works. Okay, so this is the actual uh, control panel itself. You can see it has 12 pairs of push buttons uh, to control the two directions for the turnouts that you would want to control with it. Uh, on one end, it has a plug or a socket, and it comes with this cord and um, plugs in just like this. And these are used to connect multiple control panels together. So you could have several of these daisy chained together uh, on your fascia or uh, wherever on your model railroad so you could control all of your turnouts from one central location. Or you could have multiples of these scattered around the layout uh, at locations where you want to control 
groups of turnouts. And you'll see there's 12 different pairs of these push buttons. And that allows you, of course, to control 12 different accessory decoders. So in my case, I've only got eight switches or turnouts here on the layout. So I'll only be using the first eight of these to control those. The other four down here, I'll probably end up using for things like turning the lights on and off in various buildings or controlling signals here on the railroad. So if you uh, do go ahead and use multiple uh, control panels daisy chained in one location like this, then you do need to power this separately if you get more than four. But up to four, it will work off of the cab bus itself. So no problem there. Uh, for that though, at this end, let me take this cable out, you can see here that there are several connections here. This is a uh, socket for the power. It's a barrel plug socket, and it takes a center positive uh, power supply rated at anything from 12 to 18 volts DC. That has to be a, a well-regulated power supply. You don't want any fluctuations in power going to this. But again, you only need this if you're going to da daisy chain more than four of these together on your model railroad. So for the most part, I doubt many people really will need that. Uh, right here then, this little small device here is an on-off switch. And right here is another one of those plug socket combinations that allows you to daisy chain these together. So it would come out the other end and go into this end and allow you to connect them up. So that's all there is to it. It's an on-off switch and this plug right here, which is your DCC command bus socket. Okay, so it comes with one of these uh, coily cords like this and uh, has six pins on it so you can connect it in and use it with your NCE system. So let me show you some more about that. Now one of the things that you have to remember about these is because they are essentially a throttle, they have to have their individual cab number just like your NCE cabs. This is my power cab throttle, but it's being used as a standard uh, pro cab throttle right now. Um, and let me point out that this system uh, will work with any of the NCE systems. I've tried it with my power cab. I have tried it now with the uh, SB5. Before we go on, I want to ask you to take a moment to subscribe to the channel. It's simple, easy, and free. All you have to do is hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. To install this, all you have to do is plug it in and turn on the little power switch I showed you here on the end. And you can see it comes up and it said cab 05, which is what I set it to. And you can see there's a little blue pilot light that's come on right here. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. Okay. Um, what we then have here then is all of these turnouts are set as green, showing green. Uh, as my straight through route, and then the red, which is up here, will be my thrown turnout. So let me throw that, number one. So that indicates that uh, turnout, number one, has now been thrown to the thrown position. I'm going to put it back to straight through. So that's how easy it is. It, it works great right out of the box. Now, of course, you do have to have your turnouts controlled by uh, switch machines, powered switch machines, with accessory decoders of some type. Now in this case, to simplify things, I chose to use the IP Digitals because they come with uh, accessory decoders installed in them individually. However, you could use these with Tortoise switch machines and a Switch 8 accessory decoder to control them. You could use any other, any of the Digitrax or any other brands of accessory decoders because these are uh, will fully access over 2,000 accessory decoder addresses in here. So let's take a look at how you set all of that stuff up because it, it does require a couple of steps. Now the first thing I'm going to do is turn it off and you can see it's gone black again. Now to set up the cab address you simply hold down the cab button and turn the power on and you can see it's come up flashing 05. Now, to advance to the next position, I just hit the cab address button again, and it's now at 5. 
And then to change that, I would hit this button here, the accessory button. And six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, and back to five again, which is what I want to leave it at. Okay, then we'll power it off and back up again, and you can see it's retained the cab address of five. Now, one thing you have to remember with NCE cab addresses, um, in this particular case, this guy here has to be set to the address one address larger than all of the others on your layout. So on my model railroad here, on this module, I have my addresses written on the back of the cab. You can see this is number two, and I have a three and a four. So that means this one had to be address five or six, something like that. So it has to be one greater than the, the, uh, the largest cab address you've already got in use. And that's explained in the manual. Now, what about setting the accessory uh, decoder addresses? Well, that requires power cycling, holding down the accessory button like this, and you can see it's come up with the first digit here. It's gone to 1 now, so I would be controlling 1001 or 2001. I'm going to zero, take it back to 0, because what happens is when you set this up, it will automatically set up all 12 addresses in sequence. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 12. If you set this for 1001, it's going to be 1001 through 12. And at this point, you can't change that. You could set this, I th uh, for example, to 5, and it would be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so on. But for right now, you don't have the option of setting up individual uh, addresses out of sequence. In a future release of the product, DCC Concepts is considering making that change so that you can set up each individual push button for whatever accessory address you want. But for right now, you have to be satisfied with 1 through 12. Now, what if you have other panels connected as well? Well, once you set up the first one, then all of those will be set up in sequence. So if you had three panels, it would automatically be set for 1 through 36. Now let me point out the default here is 1 through 12. So if you're happy with 1 through 12, you don't need to change the accessory decoder addresses at all. So you can cycle through the different uh, accessory decoder addresses using the cab button until you get back over here, and then you can power it down and everything's going to come back up again. Okay. And when you push a button, it shows you what the address is that's being activated. If I go to 6, you can see it's 6 and back. Now, what about the individual addresses? How do you know or remember what's what? Well, if you look closely here, you can see that with each one of these, they provide these etched, uh, and I believe this is stainless steel, uh, sets of addresses. So I've got addresses 1 through 36 here. Now, if you are, are using more of these, they also offer these in etched brass up to 99. So you have your options there as well. Um, and then I just simply took those individual etched number plates and super glued them into these indents underneath each one of the buttons. So this one is controlling turnout number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And I've only got 8 to worry about here. How do I keep that all straight? Well, I made this little map showing the entire layout with each one of the turnouts numbered. And to make it easier to remember, I just numbered them from left to right on the main line, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And 4 is for the crossover here and then going down the yard ladder, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So it's a fairly easy thing to remember once you know the sequence. Main line, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So that's fairly easy to remember, but I do have the little map here on the fascia of the layout. Now another thing that's interesting about this, if you look at the back here, you'll see that on the extrusion, there's a little indent here and here. Now, what that is for is you can take a piece of card like this, plastic card, and cut it to whatever height you want, sit it in that little slot, 
and then use that as a prop. Got to get it in here. It's probably better if you glue it in place, but I haven't done that yet. At any rate, that will set it up at an angle. So you could use a piece of, of styrene card like I just used. You could use a piece of metal, a piece of brass strip cut to the proper uh, distance or height that you want. Or if you're not you know, concerned about that, you can just let it lay flat here. But it is nice to have it uh, slightly tilted at an angle for you so that you're uh, better able to see the individual numbers and push the control buttons. So that really is how easy it is to set up this control panel and have it operating in no time at all with an NCE system. Basically again, all you have to do is plug it in, turn it on, set the cab address so that it is one greater than what you have on your layout already, and you don't even need to set accessory decoder addresses if you're happy with 1 through 12. If you need more, as I showed you, it's very easy to change the number here for the accessory address. And then you can control your individual turnouts without any problem at all. Uh, as I said, you can use something like the NCE Illuminator uh, to control individual lights on your model railroad or to control signals on the railroad. Whatever you can use an accessory decoder for, you can use with this because it is fully capable of accessing all of the NMRA uh, accessory addresses. Very easy to use, very quick and easy to set up, literally a plug and play operation. Well, that's a wrap for today's video look at the Cobalt Alpha Central control panels from DCC Concepts. So for those of you that have NCE DCC systems, you'll be able to plug and play and use these right off the shelf, out of the box. But for the rest of you that are not NCE users, I'll be showing you in a couple of videos in the coming weeks how you can use these on your model railroad as well. So stay tuned for those videos. They'll be coming as soon as I get a chance to work with the products a little bit more and have a little bit better handle on how all of this stuff goes together. In the meantime, have a great weekend, have a great week, and we'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guy. Bye now.